This video is the introduction to the cubism inspired self portrait or portrait assignment. And on the screen, you'll see at this time a finished version of this. Um, it probably could benefit from some additional editing, um, but in general, this is where we're headed with this assignment, um, where we're combining multiple views of a person or a portrait. Um, you're combining multiple multiple views in the same image. Um, so it's a little different than the composite scene. Um, so let's go ahead and get started here by opening the first image. So I'm going to create a, another file here by opening the first image. And I'm just going to go with a profile shot right here. Click on the file that I want to open or the image and click open. And from here, you know, I have a just real basic profile shot. So before I get going, I'm going to, some of the things in the background are kind of bothering me here. There's a, uh, a piece of tape that was on the background here that's showing up as a darker spot. There's a bright highlight on the upper right hand corner and also a bright highlight here um, reflecting off the white background. And this is kind of distracting. So, you know, eventually I may end up cropping this out, um, but I want to go ahead and take care of that. And I also wanted to show you a few additional tools. Now, once I open an image, if you notice, the that image is my background layer and it's locked. So just as a general guide, I, I do like to make an additional copy of that. I just pressed Control J to duplicate that layer. You could also come up to layer and go to duplicate layer as well that'll give you the same result um, control j is the shortcut so let's go ahead and just turn off the visibility on that bottom layer and actually i do want to leave that locked so we'll leave the i just click back on the padlock icon and we'll turn off that image so i only want to work on this layer for now and i'm going to show you a, a couple of useful tools to fix some problem areas in a photograph that you might want to um, address or fix. So I'm going to come down to my patch tool and the patch tool is nestled underneath um, this area on the toolbar. Now you on the older versions of Photoshop, it, you may have to look in some of your other tools to find this. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and click the patch tool. And the way the patch tool works is you click and drag around a problem area. And then you release um, once you've made a full, uh, full loop around that area. And then all you do is just click and drag. And what it does, it takes that shape and it samples an area around it wherever you decide to uh, hover it over. So you can see if I bring it down into face area you know i could copy or patch it with an area down here which is not really what i want obviously i just want to get rid of that kind of distracting shape there so i'm just going to bring the i'm bringing that shape over clicking and dragging and then that looks pretty good i'm just going to release now and let's do the same thing over here i'm going to click and drag and make my way around this kind of highlight area bring my cursor around to make a closed shape and then click and drag to kind of make that a little less noticeable. And you can kind of see if I go, you know, too far of a dark area or if I accidentally get some of the, you know, a really dark area down here in the corner, it's going to be even worse. But that's not really the goal. I just want to kind of make that a little less noticeable. And then I'll click and drag and just release and then click off of that. And that seems to do a pretty good job. And I'm going to come around here and I highlight right next to uh, my forehead. And I'm just going to click and drag. I'm not going to get too close to here because if I accidentally get part of the pixels here, I'll just kind of show you what ends up happening. When you click and drag, you end up getting a smear kind of effect. It'll blend and blur the pixels at the edge. So I, I don't want to do that. I'm going to press Control-Z to back up. And also, if I want to deselect this, 
press Control B to deselect that selected area and then click and drag again. So I'm not going to get totally close to that edge. I just want to kind of come in um, just to kind of make this a little less noticeable. And we'll kind of bring it up maybe. Let's see. Looks pretty good and we'll release. So I'm not going to get rid of all of that bright reflection. I just want to reduce that and make it a little less noticeable. So I'll press Control T to deselect. And that looks a little better. It's not this glaring bright highlight there that becomes kind of distracting. All right, from this point, uh, I'm going to go ahead and use a different selection tool. I'm going to go with uh, the magic wand just to kind of talk briefly about that. It is a very helpful tool and it can give you some good results um, depending on your background. So we're going to select the magic wand and then you have the same kind of options up here. You can create a new selection. This will add to a selection, subtract from a selection, and then intersect with the selection. And there's no real presets presets for this so you can't really change the brush size so much but you do have some settings for tolerance um, and contiguous so uh, for, my, for the most part I would kind of leave those alone I wouldn't really mess around too much with that um, but let's go to add to selection so if you click the magic wand tool does do a pretty good job selecting areas that are similar in pixel I just press Control D Z to go back there. So if you just like with the uh, quick selection tool or the lasso tool, if you press the Alt button, you can subtract from your selection as well. So just be aware of that. And I'm actually going to get a little closer in here. I don't need all the the hair here, and it's doing some crazy things as well so that looks pretty good that's not a bad selection I'm not too worried about the hair along the edge here I can lose a little bit of that and then just like with the other selection tools you go to select and mask and maybe we'll smooth this a bit it looks kind of jagged and pixelated around some of these edges so we'll smooth that a bit and then I'm not going to worry about feathering or adjusting anything else um, this looks like a pretty good selection. And let's go to New Layer with Layer Mask for the output and click OK. So essentially, I've masked out the face in, in, at this point. And let's go ahead and make a copy of that layer as well. And I want to create a new layer so that I can place the, the, the second image, the different view. Um, inside this masked area. So I'm going to go ahead and just, I, if you notice, I clicked on the layer below that, and I, I'm just going to click the new layer icon down here at the bottom of the layers panel. And then I'm going to go up to file, and this case, this time, instead of using the open command, I'm going to come down and use the place embedded command, because I want to put the, the next picture in my Photoshop file. I'm using the place embedded, uh, place embedded uh, command. I would stay away from the place linked. Um, place embedded is going to put it right in the file and, and not create a link for me. So this is what I want. And that'll bring me up to my files, and I can just go right here, click on the frontal view, and then click place. As you can see already, you know, it's showing up inside that area that's masked out. Now I can kind of click and drag and move this and get it kind of close, but right now my proportions are a bit off. You know, I was a little closer in this photo um, when I was taking the shot. So I'm just going to back out a little bit by pressing Control I, and I'm going to hold the Shift key, and I'm going to just very gradually resize this image. So I can get it to match up with the contours in the previous one. So if I go right at the mouth, that looks pretty good. I want to line up the, the lips there. And actually, that looks really good. So I'm going to just 
release there. Maybe we'll nudge it up just a touch. And to finish placing, you just click the Enter key. And all right, so I'm in pretty good shape here so far. So in the next video, I'm just going to continue and show you how to mask out some of these areas. So we'll pick that up on uh, with the next video.